Good afternoon. Phil Lindemann with your news from Avalanche Physical Therapy on Crystal 93. The Ptarmigan Fire is smoking again. Crystal listener spotted a pillar of smoke rising from the hillside around 3 o'clock today. Steve Lipscher with Summit Fire. We expected that we would see smoke and maybe even flames from the, you know, the interior of the burn and everything. And then that's what's happened. Things heated up enough. We got a little wind and we got a little flare up there. A helicopter is en route and more than 100 personnel are still on site working the fire lines. Latest containment was 75%. A semi-truck jackknifed on I-70 westbound heading down from the tunnels this morning around 11.30, stalling traffic for a half hour. No injuries reported. Traffic is back up to speed there. Also causing backups on eastbound I-70 is road work at exit 203 and Frisco, down to one lane. Keep it tuned here for the latest. Summit Fire and EMS is asking for a mill levy increase of $4.5 million this election, their first in a decade. Chris Romano, engineer at the Keystone Station, representing the local fire union. SFE is looking at a $5 million shortfall due to the sunsetting of County Tax 1A from 2014, a decrease in out-of-county transports so that they can adequately provide 911 service to the district, and the combination of multiple agencies over the last few years. Romano admits you've seen the fire district on the ballot twice in two years, but not for a tax hike. Two years ago, SFE had a question about degallagorization. That was a question that fire districts across the state put on the ballot, and all that was was to stabilize their revenues, maintain their current property uh, assessment rates. Last year, the question on the ballot was specifically for Copper Mountain voters, and that was a vote for inclusion. Cash would go to a potential new fire station in Silverthorne and shoring up the cost of absorbing the ambulance district. Lou Larina, lieutenant at the Dillon Station. The majority of our calls are medical in nature, and so bringing in that ambulance service we feel was the right thing to do for the community. Uh, having paramedics on the engines, so kind of that, that highest level of field care. Ballots are in the mail next week for Election Day, November 2nd. The Summit School Board election is making waves on social media, like a post on the group Summit Together asking for thoughts on the candidates. A local teachers association is backing four candidates, including three incumbents and one newcomer, Chris Guarino, writes one member of the association. That group of candidates brings us so much knowledge and diverse experience in areas of funding, policy, operations, and curriculum. Another group of four running under the umbrella Four for the Kids is getting cash support from donors, a combined $21,000 from $5,000 to $6,200 apiece. That is five times more than any other candidate. Crystal 93 is interviewing all nine candidates. Tune in next week for their insights. Today at 530, Summit County is hosting the first of two public meetings to answer your questions about new short-term rental rules, like the difference between resort and neighborhood zones, and who qualifies for one of three license types. That open house meeting goes from 530 to 7 at the Silverthorne Library. The second meeting is next Thursday in Breck. In sports, the Avalanche play the Stars tonight at 6. And in local sports... Today on the warm up. It's a sport that the games are won in the offseason and it's just a year long thing and it's just it's such a fun sport to play. That was Tigers senior wide receiver Aiden Collins looking back on a decade of playing football and why he fell in love with the sport. I have a goal to be a family. I mean, each and every week we're all together and we just want to be a close unit because if we're not close unit, then we're all going to be off timing games and practice. Collins leads his team in receptions and this weekend up against Glenwood Springs. He is hoping for something the Tigers have never done. Summit football has never beat Glenwood, so first off, I'd say goal is 100% to beat Glenwood. I mean, we've had the time and preparation to go in and do it, and I feel the boys are feeling comfortable defensively and offensively, and I think we have a really good shot if we execute. Summit plays Glenwood at home this Saturday, 7 o'clock. This has been the warm-up with your Summit High Tigers, brought to you every Thursday and Friday by Alpine Lumber, Sauce on the Blue, and I Furnish in Frisco and Kremling. In other preps news, boys soccer takes on Vail Mountain School at home today. Phil Lindemann with your news from Avalanche Physical Therapy on Crystal 93.